The Lord be with you. Today, I, this is the green <clears throat> season of the church year when our pyramids are normally green. So when you see a change to red, you know something's different. Well, today is a day that we celebrate. It's called Holy Cross Sunday. And we follow these commemorations when they fall on a Sunday. And uh, September 14th is the, the date to celebrate this day. And the church has celebrated Holy Cross Sunday ever since 335. And that was when, if you remember your Christian history or history in general, Constantine, the emperor of, Rome, of, of the Roman Empire, became a Christian in 312. His mother, partly by the influence of his Christian mother, and after he became a Christian, she was then able to go to Jerusalem, and she found a, I'm, I'm sure with the help of others, a couple of sites, for instance, uh, the site of Jesus' crucifixion and the place where he was buried. Her son, Constantine, built a church on each site. Uh, and by the way, for a while there, uh, uh, historians said, no, it's not the right site, and now they seem to be swaying the other direction. They believe that was the, the right site. The church that was built on the place where Jesus died, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, was uh, dedicated in 325, excuse me, 335. We now commemorate that uh, dedication of that church as Holy Cross Day. And that's today. Our text is about uh, lifting up the cross. Today we also have a service of healing, and that's what we begin our service with, uh, healing of all kinds. Uh, so we begin then with our entrance hymn, O Christ the Healer we have come. Please rise. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
We gather to hear the word of God, pray for healing of every kind, spiritual, physical, and emotional, and ask God's blessing for health and wholeness through, our, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Great God, our healer, by your power, the Lord Jesus healed and gave hope. As we gather in his name, look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father. You sent your Son to live among us and bring us your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, incomparable Son of the Father. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity, and you came to heal all our illnesses. Praise to you, Holy Spirit, our defender and counselor. You heal our sickness with your mighty and life-giving power. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken in our lives, in this nation, and in the world. Hear us. O Lord of life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. You may be seated.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Peace, Leo. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. To those who look upon the cross, grant your wisdom, healing, and eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The reading for today is from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. 
uh, out of chapter 1, reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Back 30 some years ago, when I went to my first congregation to interview to see whether or not they wanted me as a pastor way out in the middle of Kansas, uh, Wilson. The reason I was going out there was uh, I actually was called to the president of the seminary's office. That's sort of like being called to the principal's office. And he said, Dan, you're certified for call. Where do you want to go? 
And I said, well, my wife and I have talked about this, and we want you to just send us anywhere. He goes, no, 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 you've got to tell me where you want to go. And I said, no, 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 no. We'll let the Holy Spirit do that. I was probably a little naive. <laughs> so I get this uh, come an interview, so take the plane Frontier Airlines. Didn't know if it was even going to land in the airport in Salina because it was so windy. The wings just went back and forth like this until it hit the ground. Um, Arnold DeLazel came and picked me up, a farmer. And as we were driving along, I'm going, boy, this is sure <laughs> flat out here. And he goes, oh, that's good farmland. You're right. You are right. That's good farmland. I guess flat is good. And it was getting dark, and as we near Wilson, about 15 miles away, we come up over a hill, and I look out in the distance, and I'm going, what is that? And I'm looking, and it's a cross, and it looked like it was on fire. I thought, whoa, what am I getting myself into? Do they have the Ku Klux Klan out here? It was a huge cross, at least 50 feet tall, maybe taller. And it happened to be, lo and behold, right next to Excelsior Lutheran Church. Excelsior Lutheran Church is probably 10 miles, 10, 15 miles from uh, Ellsworth, Kansas, and about that far from Wilson, Kansas, where I was headed. Now, what made those Lutherans put up that big cross? It could be seen from the freeway. Their little church was there, but they wanted to make sure that everyone knew what they stood for, the cross, the cross of Jesus. By the way, it was a big, tall pole that actually they had a pulley system where it could be lowered to the ground to change all the bulbs. And the cross member was actually a huge circle, probably 40 feet in diameter, which light bulbs attached all the way around, and they lifted that up. And the reason it was a circle is that no matter what direction you looked at, it looked like a cross. It was really quite remarkable. And that little church had 12 people worshiping in it. Guess how many people are worshiping there now? Twelve people. <laughs> the little churches tend to, never to die. As long as you can get somebody to come and preach, and somebody comes up from uh, Bethany College, drives the 75 miles every week to come and preach there, and they get 12 people. And most of their budget must go to pay for those light bulbs and the electricity. <laughs> they were proud of the cross, weren't they? The Apostle Paul if you heard those words that Vicki read this morning, the Apostle Paul says, though, the cross is foolishness to the wise, foolishness to the powerful. But those who are being saved, those who believe in Christ, see in it the power of God. The world truly does see the cross as foolishness. Uh, Martin Luther saw it as the theology of the cross. Lutherans were theologians of the cross. We believed in the cross and understood uh, what the cross meant versus the theology of glory. Theology of glory tended to put humans on the pedestal and Everything was for the edification and glory of humans, even salvation. That's why he would say salvation by works was uh, part of the theology of glory. An example of theology of glory, you may have picked up on it in the, on the internet this week. Uh, Victoria Olstein. Everybody, do you remember who Joel Olstein is? He's the televangelist. He's got a, a stadium in Houston, Texas, 
that seats probably 19,000 people and he fills it every weekend, maybe a couple of times. And his wife is now the co-pastor there. And she said these words which caused quite a, an uproar on the internet. She said, do good for your own self. When we obey God, we're not doing it for God, we're doing it for ourselves. She said ourself, I think she meant ourselves, because God takes pleasure when we're happy. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself because that's what makes God happy. Quite a debate about it. But you see, theirs is a ministry that it's a ministry about humans and them and being happy as though God's mission in this world is to make us happy rather than our mission in this world is to, ful to ful fulfill God's mission and become Christ-like. Why? Because to become Christ-like is to become God-like. So that brings us to the cross. What do we see on the cross? In and on the cross, we see Jesus who now defines for us the very personality of God. We see God's passionate love. Now we've taken that word passion and passionate and uh, I guess we sexualized it, have we not? Passionate lovers are uh, those dynamic people who, uh, good looking people, and whenever you hear about a passionate lover, there's usually a lot of skin and breathlessness involved, isn't there? But at the, the root of that word, passion, if you look it up in the dictionary, passion means suffering. So on the cross, we see the passionate love of God, the suffering love of God. And God comes to us in Christ on the cross to let us know that at the very heart of God is this desire to give and suffer for us so that when we're suffering, we know that God suffers along with us. When we're giving, it delights God's heart. When we're serving, it delights God. The cross defines for us the very passionate love, the very nature of God. So on Holy Cross Sunday, what it is all about, it's about understanding God's passionate love for us, dying for us, so that what can we do? We can die too and find our life by giving our lives. I, um, let me tell you about a pastor friend of mine. And if you talk to this pastor's friends, uh, parishioners, they think he's a little weird, but they think he's the perfect, perfect pastor. Drives a car that most of the time does not run. Do you know why? He doesn't pay enough attention to it to keep it running. A house where the paint is peeling. Why? Because he'd rather go to Habitat for Humanity and build a house. Uh, by the way, this car 
is always full of papers and books, and it's quite a mess, but for some reason, the congregation members think that's charming. And when he shows up late for meetings, which he does all the time, they think, oh, isn't that what a pastor is supposed to do? When he meets with other pastors and they go out for lunch, doesn't have money. He's, al he's always giving money to someone else. After the kids grew up, and his kids were ridiculed because their pastor dressed as though he bought his clothing at Goodwill, which he did, and they also looked that way. The kids were ridiculed, and, and sometimes they were chased home from school and kids threw rocks at them. Finally, when the kids grew up, by the way, his wife agreed with him and agreed with his lifestyle, but when the kids grew up, she finally left him. They had a wonderful relationship and still do. She just couldn't take the ridicule any longer. The guy's always helping and serving and caring for someone. Now it's foolish because he doesn't take care of himself enough. But somehow his congregation thinks, ah, he's living the life of the cross. And somehow his congregation thinks, I wish I could live that way too. Well, today we celebrate the cross because it reveals to us the heart of God and his passionate love. He wants us to be passionate lovers too. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, I believe in God the Father Almighty. I with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Loving Redeemer, as we take up the cross, make your mighty works known to all generations through the stories that our Help us always to proclaim your love for you through our words and actions. In the same way you care for us, help us to be aware of the needs of others and respond in love. Hear us, O God. On this, the anniversary of 9-11, we have so much to pray for. We remember those who died and pray for peace for their loved ones. We pray for first responders then and now and for our nation. Guide and protect us, especially as we move toward war to protect Iraqi and Syrian civilians from the Islamic State militants. Make peacemakers of the leaders of this world. Inspire them to do what is right and just, even if it looks foolish. Hear us, O oh God. Healing, we pray for all who suffer in mind and body. We ask for your healing presence for the sick and the dying, especially Alton Burnell, Gail Davidson, Zach Drake, Wilbur Dykeman, Betty Evans, Zamir Godfrey, Jim Lampy, Elaine Mitchell, Reverend Mark Moss, Wayne Myers, Katie Snaff, Jacob Sparkle, Mary Thomas, and Virginia Vaughn. Are there any others? Heal them with the encouragement of the gospel. We give thanks for the blessed dead, that they, together with all your saints, be lifted up in your glory. Comfort those who mourn. Hear us, O oh God. As people from Ministry Area 8 meet with the bishop, we lift up the mission of the congregation, as well as all Area 8 congregations, their ministries, stewardship, fellowship, outreach, homebound, children, volunteers, and councils. Make us a beacon of your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy be great. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need. In the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills are gathered together to become one bread, so the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power You may be seated. Today we commune via intinction. That is where you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand and you hold on to it until the cup comes by and you can dip or intinct it into the wine. The second oldest form of communion in history. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O oh God, the host at every meal, at this table you spread out a feast for all peoples, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Send us from this banquet to invite others into these good things, to let justice roll down like waters, and to care for the least of our sisters and brothers. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and our savior, amen. I'm going to encourage you to look at your messenger. Oh, let me just share with you two things. I think I have those two things. There we go. One is a very nice thank you note, and I won't read the whole thing, but. Uh, uh, our neighbors thanked us. We got a couple of uh, thank you letters from our neighbors for uh, God's work, our hands. And uh, this person said, um, some of the items were just down within our area because of a windstorm, and other items had been sitting in backyards for years. Some of those neighbors have small vehicles that won't all the items and others are just up in years and they're unable to manage their property and goes on. So they're very grateful. And then another one, thank you for your generosity of removal of our recycling yard debris. It really helped me tremendously. You are certainly doing something worthwhile. <laughs> I guess you didn't say it quite that way, baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless each and all in Christ's love. Anyway, and then another person on the same, oh, there's another note, but you get the point. I thought that was nice. One thing I will emphasize today, 3.30 to 5.30, the bishop will be here. It's one of those rare bishop sightings. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Our closing hymn was supposed to be Lift High the Cross. It's not mine either. <laughs>